Hello, and welcome to today's episode of the Scottsdale Living Podcast. I have two of my really great friends here, Mr. and Mrs. Iniguez. Thank you for coming on today. Oh, thank you for thank having, you for us, having us here. Absolutely. So um, introduce yourselves to our listeners. My name is Adolfo Iniguez, and this is my wife, Alma Iniguez, Special Ops Plumbing. So I love Special Ops Plumbing. I've gotten nothing but amazing um, things said about your company, and I got to go to dinner with you guys and get to know you a little bit better. And I learned some things about your company that I knew that we had to share. And I want to be able to help you tell that story. So I know a little bit about your work history, but let's start there. So tell me a little bit about your background and before you started Special Ops Plumbing. Uh, well, my background uh, has always been in, in plumbing. I've been in plumbing uh, for 30 years uh, with uh, a couple of companies, you know, um, started in Tucson uh, back there. And then after um, 9-11, the construction uh, came to a complete halt. Mm-hmm. And so I had to find work immediately to feed my family. And that's when I decided to come come up here to Phoenix. Okay. You still have some family in Tucson too, right? Yes. The family that you guys help take care of. And how big is your family? Adolfo's is much bigger than mine. <laughs> <laughs> My family has only four, five, four siblings and parents. Uh huh. And obviously nieces and nephews. But his is much bigger. So how big is your family, Adolfo? Uh, there's uh, five of us, uh, plus uh, a ton of cousins. Uh huh. Uh, which course. we consider uh-huh. like a really yeah. close like siblings. Yeah. yeah. I'm from Southern Arizona too. And it just like, it is just that way. Everybody's mm-hmm. family and you bring everybody together. Yeah. You have big meals. Mm-hmm. Everybody's together for the holidays. It's very like special. I really mm-hmm. like that about Arizona culture. I think that that's what it is. Mm-hmm. Phoenix is a little bit different because we are very city. And I think think people can easily become detached from their like family unit and their community unit if they, if they think about it that way. Mm-hmm. Um, but from where I come from, it is family mm-hmm. is essential family is important and that sense of community where everybody's taking care of each other is really important. So I love that about you guys. That's something that I resonate with. Um, so tell me about your family together. How did you two meet? Okay. We met, um, coming into the year of 1990, my for my boyfriend, my former boyfriend at the time, he, and you know, he broke up with me with a letter. Uh huh. My friend, That's a terrible way to be broken up with. Yes, it, it was. It, it was devastating for me. <laughs> Anyways, um, my friend invites me to go to Mexico to a nightclub. So we go at 3, 4 in the morning. That's what time, you know, Mexico is okay to close their parties uh-huh. or their having fun time. <laughs> and coming out of the nightclub, I meet Adolfo, his brother and his cousin. On New Year's Eve. And New Year's Eve. Wow. So then my friend tells me, you know, why don't we just, you know, with little conversation we had, my friend tells me, why don't we give them, you know, like a ride across the line? And I said, no, because they're strangers. And she's uh-huh. like, come on, it's three of us with my sister and three of them. And then on our way crossing the border, she gives them my letter. And Your breakup oh my letter. Gosh. Yeah, now, now you what? go. Now you go. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. everybody read it. My brother, my cousin. And when it got to me, I read the first sentence. And I, God, that was 34 years ago. I don't even remember what it said. But I asked her, do you want to keep this? And she said, no. So I tore it up. Oh, wow. I tore it up, you know. And um, my brother, my brother actually asked her for her number. Uh-huh. So she gave it to him. And my brother gave me her number so that I can uh, hold on to it and not lose it. Well, wow. I never gave the, her phone number to my brother. Oh my gosh. She said, nope. <laughs> Pocket that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so a few That's weeks funny. later, um, the following week, we come back to the same nightclub and I see his brother with another girl. So it's like, uh, you know what? I mean, <laughs> no more. So we, you and I just, you know, were together that night. Yeah. You came to me. And then like for school, he just went to find me because he lives in Bisbee at the time. Okay. I'm from Douglas. Uh-huh. I'm from Sierra Vista. This yeah. is like the triangle oh, wow. right Coaches here. County yeah. There. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So 30 minutes apart. Yes. 30 minutes <laughs> That's apart. Cool. Yeah. So um, he came to visit me at school, but he didn't, he, you know, he never knew where I was. So he went to look for a friend of, mutual friend of ours. Mm-hmm. And she said, oh yeah, I know where she's at. So he went to visit me without even me knowing. And from there on, we've been together. 
30, we're going on 31. And going on 31 30 years, years married. Congratulations. Thank and you, you guys have uh, children of your own. Yes. Is it yes. four? Four. Four. Okay. Mm-hmm. four. So tell, tell me about your kids. Right. <laughs> our oldest, is, uh, her name is Adrian. Uh, she's 29. And then our son is uh, 25. Um, and twin daughters of 22. Wow, uh, twins. Yes. The lucky bunch there. Yeah. <laughs> and they're all living at home still. <laughs> wow. Okay, that's cool. So yeah. you guys have family dinners all the time. All the time. I love yeah. family dinner. It's one of my very favorite things. We just celebrated Adolfo's birthday on Wednesday. Oh, Wednesday. happy so birthday. All of us oh, thank you. went to dinner. Happy birthday. The, that's what I like about our family. It's like I was thinking my daughter's, our daughter's 29. She's been with us 29 years celebrating uh-huh. everybody's birthday. Uh-huh. And... We left when we were 20, 20, uh-huh. so from our house. That's like, oh, that's cool to s- still continue to celebrate birthdays and special occasions together. as a family together. That is really unique. I have six brothers and sisters, mm-hmm. and I was just thinking today, my dad's birthday is in November, and mm-hmm. I'd love to go down. And I was hoping maybe one of my brothers and sisters would, like, come down with me. Mm-hmm. Um, it just, it is something I guess we take for granted is, like, yes. that families can spend so much time yeah. together. Mm-hmm. So um, now that we've talked a little bit about your family and people have kind of a sense of that, um, tell me a little bit about why and when you started Special Ops and how that came about. Sure. Uh, Well, I'd have to go back a couple of years. Uh, Back in uh, 2016, um, I was diagnosed with a form of leukemia, blood cancer. Um, And uh, in 2020, the height of COVID, uh, they decided to uh, go ahead and give me a a transplant, stem cell transplant, okay? And that was at Banner uh, in Gilbert. And so they gave me the transplant. My sister was was my donor. I bought it, rejected her. Yeah, and... um, So you went through, when you were diagnosed, what was the information that you were given? Just that I had uh, something wrong with my platelet, with my red blood cells. Okay. My hemoglobin and stuff like that. And... uh, we never wanted to say it was cancer whatsoever wow. because we never knew, you know. Um, His condition back then was myo- myodysplastic syndrome. Yeah. Okay. So um, the reason we find out as well, too, is because on my side was I had an uncle that passed away within within a month of being uh, diagnosed of, of cancer. Um uh, an aunt passed away, I think, within uh, six months of being diagnosed with cancer. Did they have the same kind of cancer? No. No. Uh, there was all different cancers. And then wow. uh, my stepbrother or my, my real brother, um, he was diagnosed with uh, prostate cancer and he beat it as well, too. So I decided to go to the VA and uh, get tested. Um, and uh, that's when everything came back. You know, uh, I was in shock because I haven't had a physical since uh, I was in the Marine Corps. So <laughs> Thank you for your service. Oh, my pleasure. Yeah, absolutely. Pleasure. That's amazing. Um, okay, so you got diagnosed, and then everybody in your family starts getting tested to see who might be a match? Yes, that's correct. Uh-huh. And what was that process like? Uh, really, uh, the match was through Be The Ma- Match Foundation. Um, and they send you out kits and uh, do a inner cheek swab, mm-hmm. and you send it back out. Um, but... The best results would have been a, si- a sibling. So that's why uh, my sister was was tested. She was a match. And uh, we started the process. Wow. Um, can anybody do that? Can anybody, like, get tested on Be a Match? Yes. And then can. they're just in the database in case somebody actually is a great match for them? Not oh. necessarily anybody. There's a certain age cut. Oh, okay. There, yeah. there is, I believe, 50? there's fifty-five. I think. Fifty or fifty-five. Okay, there, so that's they're looking for age. like young, healthy, yes. the healthiest yes. cells they can mm-hmm. get. So if yes. you're, if you're in your twenties or thirties, and mm-hmm. you think that you're this better. might be something, now mm-hmm. what is the donor process like? Mm-hmm. What happens once they match you? Once they match us, then of course they set a date. Um, I was in the actual hospital. My sister was in the in the in in the clinic right beside the hospital, uh, and she had tubes coming in in and out of her neck the main um, uh, veins, I guess, or arteries, and uh, they extracted the stem cells from her. Wow. Okay. Um, and so you got a transplant from your sister. Yes. And then what, what happened after that? 
my body rejected uh, my uh, sister's uh, stem cells. And so uh, they were struggling to find out what uh, they were going to do next. Uh, according to what I've heard from nurses and everything, uh, this had never happened because usually a sibling is, 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 the, is, best match. is the best match. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And mind you, this happened in 2020. He was by himself in the hospital. Oh, my God. No at, visitors. The begin- at the beginning of the, that year, we had met with the doctor, and he said that I was going to be able to be there. Mm-hmm. But at the beginning of the year, we didn't know it was twenty. You know what was going to happen in twenty twenty. Mm-hmm. So when he was, when he was, you know, when they called him that everything was ready for him to go, it was already what June, July. It was July. It was July. So nobody could be there with him. I uh, one of my good friends from school had a brain tumor right at the beginning of COVID. And I went to go visit him at Barrows Neurologic and had to do a lot of funny things to get in there, um, <laughs> is what I'll say. Because <laughs> it, yeah. it just, what a tragic uh, state healthcare was in to not allow people who need the most support to even have their family beside them. Mm-hmm. I, I think it's like the, it, I think it's the worst possible thing. I'm so sorry that you had to go through that alone yes. um, and that your family didn't, you know, have mm-hmm. the even consolation to come in and like, just be present with you. Um, yeah, that's, that's a terrible experience. Um, so as you were going through this hospitalization period and so we're talking, you were diagnosed in 2016, 2016. And yeah. so it took four years. Yes. This process took four years of constant blood transfusions. Wow. So are you in remission now? Oh, yes, I am. Thank God. And you get te- checked every year? I get checked every year. Um, plus, uh, I still go back once a month to get phlebotomies uh, because of my ferritin is, is sky high. Okay. So. Okay. Well, I'm glad that you're okay and here with your family. Mm-hmm. So tell me how that, you know, transitioned into what special ops is now. Sure. Um, let me just go ahead and finish uh, mm-hmm. um, the transplant. Um, so they were scrambling. Uh, needless to say, I had a umbilical cord transplant. Okay. okay. Uh, afterwards, but in between. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah stem cells. <laughs> stem, that's stem the, cells. The, mm-hmm. Cord blood. Yeah. yeah. And if it, all I, I will, all I will ever know about my donor is that uh, right now she's currently, it's a female. She's currently nine years old and that's all I will ever know. Oh, yes. that's so cool. So <laughs> yeah. for all those people out mm-hmm. there who want to donate real stem cells, umbilical cord is a great source because it's the yes, original be the match.org. Yeah, that is so cool. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's and that's so for unique. not just for stem cells, but for any kind of being a donor for anything. Uh huh. Be the match.org. Well, stem cells themselves mm-hmm. and like in particular fetal stem cells, yes, actual fetal stem cells, um, can transform into any kind of cell in the body. Yes. That's their whole purpose. So, um, that's, so amazing because you literally got like an origin source. Yeah, <laughs> I've got two so DNAs. Cool. Yeah. That's so amazing. <laughs> two DNAs. My blood is my donors and my organs and everything else is mine. Wow. Yes. How cool is that? Very cool. Aw, yeah. <laughs> thank you to whoever that is out there yes. and your yes. parents. You. That was a great thing. I yeah. want to say something. Yeah. I want to, I want to, I continue to give thanks to his nurses at Banner, you know, Banner in Gilbert. And uh, his family, our family, our friends at CCV, it's like without them, we wouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. So I'm so grateful for all of them. And every day I continue to thank them because, you know, that's why you're here. Yes. Thank God. And his friend, you know, now his uh, his partner, partner. business partner. Who's your business partner? Uh, Business partner is Esteban uh, Leva, um, Patricia Leva. Um, They own Dignity Plumbing. Okay. Yes, definitely. So, um, uh, within the two years that I was actually gone uh, from from plumbing, uh, I worked with the previous company uh, where I had met Esteban. Okay, and uh, you worked together. We worked together. Okay. Yeah, I actually hired him for that previous company. We're not going to mention names. Mm-hmm. Um, I worked for that previous company for fifteen years. Okay, back in the industry, I, I, I was known as Junior. Okay. Okay. So every, anybody out there, it's junior. I'm back. <laughs> okay. Um, so um, in the two years that I was gone from that company, that company never called me once. Okay. That is absolutely 
terrible. Yes. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Companies live and die by the employees that are dedicated that to their correct. businesses. Yeah. So, yeah. and it's unheard of of a an employee, especially in the business industry, to stay with one company. Yeah. You know, for so many years. Well, now it's like yeah. two year max. You know, yeah. it's hard to keep people for two years. Seems like people are flighty with jobs and yep. they're not career oriented, like meaning like 20 year plus or anything like that. Mm-hmm. So you find somebody that stays five, they're probably going to stay with you longer. And somebody that stays 10, they know all the ins and outs of your business. They know everything. They, yes. they want to run it like you, like it's theirs. Oh, yeah. Wow. No call. No call whatsoever. Uh, I think I only talked to them one time uh, because I was still on their uh, alarm company's uh, contact. You know, the wow. alarm company actually called me and said, hey, you know, we got a door that's open. So I called the owners and told them what was going on. But apart from that, I, I did not have any other contact. Wow. Yeah, so um, Estevan at the time uh, started uh, Dignity Plumbing. And uh, when I was able to go back to work, I, I started working with him. And uh, he saw the potential in me, you know, to be an actual business owner. Mm-hmm. And so... Um, I, I owe it all, all, all to him. Uh, first of all, God, family, and and and, and Esteban, because uh, he's the one that actually pushed me to be a, a business owner. Wow! I never wanted to. You know, that's so cool. And I was always afraid of the taxes. That's that's <laughs> what it is. It's always the taxes. <laughs> you know, because we do pay a lot of taxes. But um, yeah, I, um, I like the cute story how Esteban met him. Their first job. That's that really gets me. Tell, tell her their the first job. <laughs> when when uh, we were at the other company, uh, we were scheduled to do a, a job, uh, which was a remodel. Uh, we get to the remodel uh, very quickly, and we assess what we needed to do was uh, replace all the drain line. So uh, we both looked at each other and uh, we said, "You start over in that corner. We start over in that corner. We meet in the middle. That's exactly what we did. We met in the middle, and we didn't say." one word to each other other than we checked each other's job. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. And uh, ever since then, we, we think like we, we know what needs to be done in a project to get it done quickly. And we, we just love working with each other because we are so much alike. If you can take a stem cell <laughs> and clone it again, uh-huh. that's how Ste- Esteban and me, I, wow. and me are. That's so yes. cool. <laughs> Um, speaking of like really special people, Lori Tanner is the CEO of treasure house. And, um, you know, every time I see her, she has nothing but amazing things to say about you because apparently she had this, like they had this big, something happen at the house. So it's yes. Curtin Brenda Warner's charity. And they had this big thing happen and you went out, you didn't just do a fantastic job. Apparently you donated a bunch of the work like, yes. Hey, I'm happy to be out here. Thanks for letting me help you with this. I just like, she said you were out there in like a matter of a couple of hours, multiple times. Like, so each time they call me, yes, it's amazing. (laughs) Like, and that's something that is really special about you and your company is you are so incredibly responsive. Um, yes. Yeah. That's been feedback that everyone has said about you and your company. So that's amazing. (laughs) Um, but tell me a little bit about special ops now. Okay. Uh, special ops, we've been in the business, uh, for, uh, one year, um, and the way the company, uh, really the company name is because of my, uh, background, uh, my background. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, even though let's get this, uh, let's get this out of the way. I was never in special operations when I was, uh, when I was in the Marine Corps. Okay. I just liked the name. Yeah. And when my, uh, nephew Chaz mentioned do special ops because of, you know, you're military and I was like, okay, not a problem. I love it. Let's go ahead and do that. You know, because even in the industry, in the, in the plumbing industry, everything is special about it. There's never two jobs that are the same. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we go in there, we diagnose this, which is special, and we have to perform an operation, mm-hmm. basically. So special ops is how that, that came about. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I only know plumbing as like toilet sinks, you know, There's a water. One time we were playing tag in the front yard and my dad had this special area of the yard that we're not allowed to run through. Yes. And we did all the time. So we're like, because 
you know, the small kids can't hurdle the bushes, but the big kids can. So one of my brothers would always run through this thing and like hurdle it. He's four years older than me. So I'm chasing him through this. I don't know which of us stepped on it. It was probably me because I didn't see it. But there was water shooting 30 feet into the air. Oh, my goodness. We each got a half a peanut butter and jelly, and we're in bed at, like, 430. You know what I mean? It was one of those days. <laughs> and it was, but, like, you know, it's one of those, like, that's what I think of plumbing to do. Mm-hmm. Is that all plumbing is? Is no. it just water? Uh, there's drain lines. There's faucets. Um, we we uh, repair, replace faucets, water heaters, uh, new installations for filtration units, uh, slab leaks. Um, anything that is from the street to your house is what we take care of. Okay. Okay. Uh, except I do have to say, um, uh, uh, irrigation. Mm-hmm. We don't do landscaping. Uh, and that's because there's just so much material to, to carry all, all the time. Plus a landscaper would be uh, a better choice. Okay. But yes, we do everything. Slab leaks, water heaters, faucet repairs, toilet repairs, replacements. So water only? No, and drain lines. We actually, water, drain lines. Uh, water, drain lines, and filtration units. Filtration. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, awesome. So um, what are the kinds of companies that you work with? Do you get most of your referrals from residents? Do you get the most really from, from companies? Yeah, right now we get a lot of referrals from uh, McCulloch Construction. Oh, okay, are fantastic. Uh, which is a remodel company. Mm-hmm. Um, and also from uh, Versatile Construction. Uh, those are our two biggest clients that, that we have. Um, about 80% of our business right now is remodels. Okay. okay? Uh, but we do want to transition um, into the service uh, industry of it as well, too, because we love helping people. We love to be your number one plumber. I love that. Are you guys primarily in, you know, Phoenix? How, where is your East, East Valley area? East Valley, East Valley. Uh, yes. Basically from I-17 East. Okay. That's what we will uh, service. Down to uh, Mesa Chandler Gilbert? Down Mesa Chandler Gilbert. Uh, I've got a Queen Creek one that I'm going to right now. Okay. As well. Uh, and then uh, Apache Junction as well. Okay. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. I love that. So anything else special about your company that we need to hit on? Um, I hit guess... On, and- integrity yeah, with it that's that one's company oh um dignity uh we have a lot of dignity we have a lot of integrity uh we're we're very very honest um and uh we're trying to bring back down the pricing of everything prior to the the covet area wow okay um, oh my gosh is that an impossible project right now it's not impossible okay uh you just have to go ahead and mind your P and Q's when, when you're getting material. Um, you always want to try and support a local company, small local company. Mm-hmm. And that's who we are. There's only me and I've got an employee and, of course, my business partner, Esteban. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, but you just want to keep your, your overhead costs low. I don't want to grow more than four to five employees mm-hmm. um, because I think that's important to us. You know, uh, to be there for our customers and not be priced out of the market. Yeah. Quality is essential. Um, Small business owners that aren't focusing on quality are easily going to be washed out. But having that pinpoint of like you're trying to cost manage for your customers, Mm -hmm. I think is a massive benefit. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. I think that there is this, I guess, misunderstanding that everyone is just overcharging, 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 but people really don't know where to look for pricing for things. Like, exactly. I have no idea if my car on the lot is overpriced by $10,000 or $2,000 or $20,000. Oh, no. I have no idea. That's not my area of expertise. Only the dealership would know. Only, you know, the salesperson would know. Um, and so we're relying on these businesses to hopefully have some sense of integrity and guide us through a process where they can make a profit, but they also are not like scraping my wallet down to the pennies. Exactly. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it's a really hard thing to find right now, I think, um, in our area. And so I love that about your company. Thank you for doing that. Oh, you're, you're welcome. Yeah. And uh, I know being new, new in the industry, the company, um, I know that uh, we have to have our customers trust us. Yes. Okay? And so um, they do trust the bigger companies and everything, but you're also paying for their commercials. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, so um, one one day, maybe. 
uh-huh. but it's not going to be anytime soon. Okay. <laughs> I get that. I get that. Um, is there anybody else you guys would like to mention or thank as far as your business has gone, gone over these, uh, you know, honestly, the last, I guess, almost 20 years now that you've been in the industry? 30. 30. Yes. So um, is there anybody else you guys are like, this person, I know uh, Esteban, um, but anybody else that you guys would like to mention? Our church group. Uh-huh. <laughs> really, our church group, our yeah. Church group. Uh, um, uh, our head pastor, Norberto, um, Chiche. Chiche, he uh, he really um, uh, is from Douglas as well, too. Oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's from world. Douglas. Actually, my wife uh, met him even before, you know, ha- has known him even before we, we've known each other. Wow. You know, so, yeah, we've got uh, our, our brother, uh, Carlos Valencia, our sister, Lydia Valen- uh, Valencia, um, uh, Rene Blanca, you know, uh, Noel, uh, big shout out to uh, Jeff Dacus. You know, he's a sergeant with the uh, Glendale Police. Oh, uh, also, um, and uh, we got uh, Gabe, uh, who's uh, Phoenix Police Department as well, too. But uh, yeah, it's, it's just it's a, a huge it's, brother. It's RCC, RCCV group is, it's yeah, Andrew, it's and Ma- Andrew and Maxine Navarro. Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, it's, it's, we're such a, tight, small, little neighborhood group as well, too, that uh, we go leaps and bounds for each other. I love that. Mm -hmm. There's nothing like community support, and hopefully we've been able to provide that to you today and tell a little bit of your story so people understand the values and can get to know you a little better and invite you welcomely into their homes. (laughs) I know one of the things that I did get feedback on was one of my friends had called you, and she felt very comfortable just like leaving her house and making sure that you know, here yes. you go. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for taking care of this and that everything was going to be done correctly. There's nothing like that peace of mind when, when you have someone coming out to service something in your home where you're like, I mean, I don't know. Do I have to lock every door? Do I have to sit here and babysit? Like to, to have a company that you know you can trust to do that is su- such an amazing quality. Yes, we are licensed, bonded, and insured, you know, on that too. But uh, I also want to give kudos uh, to uh, our BNI group. Yeah, you know, the Scottsdale executives. There yes. we go. You know, we're part of it. Uh, you and Amber, um, it, it, they've been fantastic. Yeah. You know, uh, and for them to trust me and um, especially get me into that group, uh, it means means a lot. Yeah, I love that. I got to thank especially because uh, his caregiver is one of our twins. Oh, so yeah. she did a really good job. Adamaris. She did a really good job taking care of him when I wasn't there. She was always there and she's still there. <laughs> <laughs> she hasn't left. <laughs> our, ch- our, our children were a big help, you know, yeah. through this whole pres- process. His family, my family, our parents. Oh, and our nurses. Our yeah. Our nurses, Gail. Uh, yeah. She's our doctor. Yeah. Erlickson. Dr. Erlickson. Definitely. All the staff. They call me the miracle man because they they've never seen a patient get up in and out of the hospital so quickly. Quick, even though spending 95 days with two two stem cells. Wow. You know, so they call me the miracle man. Wow. I just say it's, uh, I wasn't, you know, I owe it all to the man upstairs. And that's what they say. They say when every time they see him, because when we go for uh, follow-ups, they continue to tell him, you're a story in this, in this hospital. You're a story. Wow. You're, we tell your story to other, you know, patients so they can look forward to healing as you have. That is amazing. Thank you guys so much for sharing. Thank you for Um, having us. Thanks for sharing your story. Thanks for inspiring others by making sure that you are in the mindset to continue to provide, survive, Mm -hmm. thrive for your family and Mm -hmm. that your family was there also to provide you everything that you needed. I think that that is speaks volumes about each of you and where your heart is and how you've taught even your children and your friends about what you are and who you help to inspire through the community. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. If anyone wants to get a hold of you <laughs> for, business, <laughs> yeah, for business or to talk about, you know, something that they've gone through, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes that's a great, yeah. Or, or yeah. If somebody else is struggling with what you, mm-hmm. what you have gone through or needs a little bit of mentorship or anything, mm-hmm. um, how can they get a hold of you? Our special ops uh, uh, plumbing uh, phone number is 602-679-4844. If you guys want to talk about anything else, uh, my cell number is 623-570-3555. 
Excellent. Thank you guys so much. Alma Thank Adolfo you. Iniguez from Special Ops Thank Plumbing. You. Thank you. And that has been our episode of the Scottsdale Living Podcast.